Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host Owen, the channel that brings you your team every single day. Look, we won yesterday. It is three points to the good. We are three points better off. We are now second in the table. And you know what? It's nice to actually have a win. Uh, we go now into the international break. Unfortunately, there is an international break now. Uh, you know my feelings on international football. Um, find it absolutely boring, find it absolutely dull, maybe English, but don't watch England, uh, don't watch Scotland, don't watch Ireland, don't watch Republic of Ireland, don't watch anyone, because I don't like international football, I think it's a waste of time. Look, we've got a, I don't know, we, there's kind of a reality check comes out of yesterday, and I think a reality check comes out of this start of the season, a reality check that we've got to kind of deal with, of where we are as a club now, and where we are at in terms of our progress forward. Now, there's fans, I've taken, again, criticism again on, and I, look, I know that Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, is a very hostile place, and there's even people that I know really well who have really pissed me off today with their attitudes, um, but look, at the end of the day, we are in a position where we won today, we got three points and a clean sheet, we have three positives to take away from today. Now, there's a lot of people that think oh, I like to sit here and I like to slag off Rangers. I like to slag off the, the players. I like to slag off the board. I like to slag off the manager. I don't. I'd love to sit here and praise everyone and be absolutely buzzing about what I've seen, buzzing about what I've looked at, buzzing about what I've watched. I'm not an expert. I'm not pretending to be an expert. I'm a fan. I am a coach. I have coached to a reasonably high level in terms of, well, not high level, I have a coach to a level. I have a FA coaching award. I have FA coaching certificates. Um, I have some knowledge of football. Let's just say that. Today, what got me about Rangers was, and there are some exceptions, Abdal Asima again, Zach Lovelace, who I thought was great. We'll talk about those players shortly. But to me, there was too much backwards passing. There was too much sideways passing. There was no urgency to, to the game at all. There was no... At times, you kind of would have forgot that we were playing against 10 men. Um, up until that second goal went in, Motherwell was still very much in that game and we weren't putting them under any pressure. We weren't dominating that game the way that we should have done with one player over. We weren't working the ball. We weren't working the channels. We weren't working the gaps. We weren't making them work hard enough because we weren't moving the ball fast enough. We weren't moving the ball quick enough. We weren't creating, creating the space and the gaps and tiring them out. The play was pedestrian at times. I've had discussions with Dave today where people who've thought that we played really well and it was a fantastic performance. I've even had a comment, you know, that we were watching different games. To those fans, I say, you really do not understand the game of football. You really don't understand what you're talking about because at the end of the day, yes, we won. Yes, we got three points. Yes, we scored three goals. But the calibre of the performance is not good enough. And it was Samirin who were poor today. You play like that against Celtic. You play like that in Europe. You're going to get your asses handed to you. That is a fact. That is a plain and simple fact. Um, I think some fans do have a, a delusion because of the fact that the league is so weak. Um, and any sort of performance that ends in a victory is obviously a good performance, which is, is, is wholly wrong. To me, it was an average performance today. Um, positives, Tavernier, two good goals, very good going forward. Very good goals going forward. But again, like I reiterated a number of times, he's not there to score goals. He is there to defend. Uh, Abdallah Seema was very good again. I thought McCausland was very lively when he came on. Lovelace was, was great when he came on. Um, one thing about Zach Lovelace, you know, today that he really showed the, the what youth brings to the team, an enthusiasm, a quality, a forward thinking, um, you know, way of playing. Both him and McCausland were a breath of fresh air in that team today. And, you know, seeing Zach go down and go down in such pain, and seeing Zach injured was awful and seeing him sat there looking so dejected and he looked to be in tears, to be honest with you, was, was awful. Zach was brilliant. I thought Zach was one of our best players. And in the time that he was actually on the field, he was probably the best player on the pitch at that time. I thought Zach was absolutely first class. Well done, Zach Lovelace. You know, we are going to talk in this, in this video this morning, this afternoon, this evening about the manager search. News about Graham Sooners as well and how he's involved with the manager search. Hang on for that. That is coming up very shortly. I thought as well, Abdallah Seema again, you know, proved himself to be a, a quality player. Now, Abdallah was someone who's come in from a lot of criticism. You know, at the start of his time at Rangers, he got an awful lot of criticism, but he's put that behind him. He's worked hard. He's scored goals. He's done what Serial Dessas has singly failed to do. He's brought his ability to the fore and he's been quality. You know, he did really, really well today. He played well. 
He didn't start running. He scored a goal again. A great move between him and Raskin. You know what we needed to see the whole game, but didn't. Quality, fast, quick passing going forward with a brilliant finish by Abdallah Seema. Seema's shown that he is someone who will not take any crap from anyone. He, he's big, he's physical, he's fast. He's got an eye for goal. You know, I think it's what, eight goals this season now, top scorer for, for us. He's been fantastic. And, you know, it's unfortunate that he's a lone player. Whether or not we can sign him on a permanent basis, I don't know. But he's certainly someone I would like to see the club hang, hang on to. He, you know, he, he, along with Jack Butland, has probably been one of our best signings. So for me, you know, I give Abdallah a whole lot of criticism. Abdallah was my man of the match. I know, you know, the Tav fanboys vote for Tav. But for me, it was Seema. Seema was the man of the match. He worked hard going forward. He did his job that he was supposed to do as a player in the position that he was supposed to. He scored two goals. He scored a goal, sorry. He played very, very well indeed. So for me, Abdallah Seema was absolute quality today and, and, and did a very, very good job. Now, today there was some performances that weren't great. I thought Lundstrom was poor again. Um, people said, oh, we covered every blade of glass. Grassy worked hard. Yeah, but his actual passing and his and his decision-making was very poor today again. Um, I thought that uh, I thought John Suter played well. He read the game exceptionally well, did, did a great job at the back. But Raskin had a decent game as well. Kamar Roof, I thought, was pretty anonymous. Uh, Cyril Dessas was an absolute embarrassment again when he came on. He's put through on goal and he shins the ball back to the goalkeeper. I mean, I'm sorry, but just seriously, dump that guy. Don't ever play him again. He is absolutely useless. He is one of the worst players I have ever seen in a Rangers shirt. And there is nothing positive about him. He is absolutely useless. I mean... He just is absolutely useless. And I think the sooner we can get rid of him, the better. You know, we're obviously not going to get the money back we wasted on him, but he is he is what he is. And look, at the end of the day, hopefully De Nio will be back soon. We won't have to even have him on the bench and hopefully we can just kind of discard him and get rid of him as soon as is possible. The international break comes at the right time for us. It is a time to really try to kind of bring this team back together, to get this team ready. Um... Now, the intention, apparently, according to the media today, is that Rangers will appoint a new manager sooner rather than later. And this international break is seen as the perfect time to get that new manager. We are going to touch on that in a moment. It's also a time, I think, to try and get these players fit. You look at that list of injured players at this moment in time, and obviously Lovelace is added to that today, and he will be out, I think, for a considerable amount of time. But Danilo, Matondo, Lawrence, Cantwell, Dowell and Jack you look at that list and there's a number of players on that list who realistically would be first team regulars if they were fit. Cantwell, Lawrence, Danio, and to some extent, uh, Ryan Jack as well. All players who are very high quality players and players we do miss. I mean, Lawrence and Cantwell in particular, you know, the fact we allowed Hadji to go out on loan, we sold Sakala. Um, you know, we do really lack that attacking midfield, that creative influence in midfield, that number 10. You know, Sam Lammers is obviously not up to the task. He's proved that. You know, Cantwell, Lawrence are, are players that we are really missing. And I think, you know, hopefully over this international break, we can really work on getting Cantwell and Lawrence back and getting them both playing. And I think they can play together because I think they would both really add something to this Rangers team, a bit of creativity. You know, Lawrence is not afraid to take a shot from outside the area or a shot full stop. Cantwell is that creative influence. He, he leads the high press. He, he, you know, his passing is quality. His shooting is quality. You know, having those two back would be a major Philip and a major lift for this team. So, you know, for me, the sooner we get those those guys back, the better for Rangers and the better for this club going forward as we seek to rein in that seven point lead that Celtic have got, which is going to be an exceptionally tough task. We realise that. And we know that because, you know, we, yes, we have got three old firm games left and they're really kind of three must win games going forward, given the fact that it's unlikely that they will drop many more points this season. But look, whoever the new manager is, he has got a hell of a task on his hand. He's got a squad that he needs to overhaul or overhaul in the summer. You know, he can't do it in January. You cannot overhaul a squad in January because you are often held to ransom on prices for players, it just is not possible. January is, a, is, is an awful window to try and buy players. You're held to ransom. You can't overhaul a squad then. It's too late. You're into the season. You need a pre-season to get players to work together. There was some good news I read today um, in a number of media sources regarding former manager Graham Soonis. Now, according to the rumours that I read in a couple of <coughs> sources, Graham Soonis has been asked by James Bisgrove and John Bennett to help advise on the new manager. 
Apparently, he was involved in the interviews with Frank Lampard and was part of the reason why Lampard was ruled out. Uh, Sooners is someone who has an excellent football knowledge, who led this club to an unprecedented era of success and really did turn this club round and, and get it back on track. Graham Sooners is a Rangers legend. He's a, he's, he's a person who, as a manager, as a person, takes no crap. He's someone who understands what it is to be a winner. He understands how it is to be a winner. Throughout his career, you look back across his career as a player, as a manager, he is a winner. He is someone who will not undertake failure. He will not take players lying down. He will not take people not giving of their best. And if he, you know, it is true that these media reports are correct, that soon as he's involved in the management process, is involved in advising Bennett and Bisgrove, it can only be at the best for this club. Because, like I said, he understands what a winner looks like. He understands what it is to manage this club. Now, I know some people have criticised him in the past for the fact that he didn't rate De Zerbi. Let's face it, who did rate De Zerbi as a manager? I, you know, I think the list is very short. But the fact that he is involved with this club and involved in you know helping with the process is a spot on one for Rangers. And I'm you know even more confident the fact that you know that Graham Sooners is involved will help us to get it right and make the right decision uh, when it comes to appointing the new manager. According to reports that are emerging from the club at this moment in time, it is a situation where James Bisgrove and John Bennett apparently will move to actually, you know, speed up the process and will hold meetings with um, with managers or prospective managers in London this week as they seek to interview and make an appointment. You know, who that manager is going to be, God only knows. You know, the, obviously the list that has gone on, you know, we've had Kietzel Knutson mentioned, Kevin Muscat, who, you know, now there's been some doubt cast over Muscat due to the fact that uh, obviously he is, um, you know, wanting to stay until December. Uh, Philippe Clement is another one. Pascal Janssen, another manager who has been linked with the job. Now, worrying news about Philippe Clement, who is certainly a fan favourite, certainly someone who is very highly rated by Rangers fans, it seems, from what I've read on social media. And I know that social media is not always the best place to get information from. According to a tweet by um, a, a journalist who works for Football Mercato, which is a you know reliable source of information, um, there is a rumour that Al-Shabaab, who are a, a Saudi team, are interested in in interviewing um, Philippe Clement for their position. This guy is called Santi Aruna. He is a football journalist for Foot Mercato. Um, he says, Philippe Clement has a meeting this week in Saudi Arabia with Al-Shabaab. The Saudis want to reach an agreement with the former Belgian coach. Um, this obviously would spell bad news for Rangers. Um, Rangers, obviously, I don't think could compete salary-wise with Al-Shabaab and what they could offer Clement in terms of money. Um, but could offer, obviously, offer European football, could offer a more interesting proposition. The Saudi league is a, is a joke, and let's face it, with everything that's going on out in the Middle East at the moment, why would you want to go out to that absolute disgusting hellhole? Um, so hopefully, you know, if Clermont it really is a target for, um, for, for Rangers, this is someone that they will get in an interview sooner rather than later. You know, according to Chris Jack tonight, you know, who's again a reliable source, Ben and Bisgrove will conduct interviews. A handful of links to the top job have been dismissed. Time frame for talks to an appointment have also been outlined as well. And the Rangers are poised to select preferred candidate as they apparently are going to London to do this. Um, it is apparently a strong rumour that this is something that will go on this week. And hopefully Rangers are hoping to have a new manager in place before uh, we play Hibs in our next game. That is apparently uh, the rumour that is going on. That is what is being discussed at this present moment. You know, certainly I think that is the answer. I don't think Stephen Davis is the long-term answer, even though he had a good result today. I do think that the sooner we get a new manager in, the sooner we get someone in that who can take that who can overhaul and start to look at this squad very critically the better for the club who that's going to be i don't know i really genuinely don't know if you honestly ask me to pin my colors to the mast at this moment in time i would genuinely struggle uh, to come up with a name for you guys well let me know what you think of all the stories we've covered in this video today whenever you pick this video up whether it's the morning the afternoon or the evening thank you so much again for choosing to watch glasgow rangers nation the support you've given this channel has been phenomenal 
I know there's criticism of the channel. I was called a crackpot today. I've been called loads of names. And you know what? I don't genuinely do, don't give a shit what these people say. You want to come on and criticize? Come on and criticize. Seriously, man. You want to come and debate me? Come on the channel and debate me because I'd love to have that discussion with you. Because you know what? I'm confident that I'd make you look really daft. Thanks for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. As always, please hit the sub, ring the notification bell. And there's two things on the way out I always need you to do for me. Number one, smash the like. And number two, remember, we are the people.